So is it really now or never for tax cuts 2.0? House Republicans have been pushing for a vote before the midterm elections in case maybe they lose the majority in the House. But some at-risk Republicans are reported to be pushing back on that vote. They don't want to go forward with it. National Taxpayers Union Executive Vice President Brandon Arnold now joins us. And I think Republicans should be maybe more than they are, Brandon, embracing this, this idea of, of at least pushing, whether they pass or not, at least pushing for tax cuts more aggressively. Oh, 100 percent. There's no question that this ought to be the top priority for House Republicans, for Senate Republicans as well. The economy is humming along very nicely. We've seen fantastic numbers coming out in the jobs report, unemployment below 4 percent. And a lot of this is fueled by tax relief and tax reform. It's time to lock in the individual tax reform. It's time to lock in the small business tax reform that we passed just last year and continue the momentum that has been built. Like one of the dynamics I've always found I guess fascinating ever since the first round of tax cuts passes and when you get out especially on a campaign trail and and watch Republicans making their case for say re-election to the House as we're watching now you you don't hear as much as you would think about the tax cuts even though to your point almost every independent economist that we speak to will say that one of the reasons the economy is doing so well is because of the tax cuts and what everybody said Anthony Chan was just on but others they say that they said the tax cuts really helped but politically they don't seem to be as popular as you would think. Why do you think that's the case? Well, I think part of it is the tax cuts are very much tied to the president. And as the president's popularity numbers change, so too do the popularity numbers of this tax cut. But it doesn't matter how you feel about the president, whether you like him, dislike him, or somewhere in between, there's no question that we've seen job growth. 650,000 manufacturing and blue collar jobs created just last year. Hourly wages increased by about 3% last year. These are major increases that are taking place. The economy is humming along, as I just said, and it's time that mm -hmm. Republicans did a better job of taking credit for that. Yeah, they don't. They don't talk about it. They really don't as much as you would as you would think that they would. Now, I saw Stephen Moore uh, quoted who advised the president on on tax policy. I know during the campaign and maybe even during this first round of tax cuts, is saying, you know what, timing-wise, we do have time. It's not the most urgent situation because these. The uh, first tax cuts, it's not like they're expiring tomorrow, uh, so there'll be another chance. But I guess the flip side of that, right, is if you lose power in, in the Congress, whether it's the House or maybe even the Senate, it's going to be much tougher after the midterms. Yeah, there's no doubt. We have no idea how the political fallout or the political circumstances are going to take take uh, effect over the coming years. Uh, if there's an opportunity to make them permanent now, you should do that. so not just because of the political benefit, but let's be honest, a lot of these tax relief provisions cater to small businesses, the yeah. pass-through entities, and they need certainty going forward. You don't want to wait until the last moment to affect their tax rates, to affect the way they operate their businesses, because that's going to have a negative impact on their, their actions and on the economy at large. And if there was any criticism last time, well, there were a number of criticisms, depending on which side of the political spectrum you come down upon, but, you know, even among conservatives to say, well, they didn't do enough for, um, you know, for individuals in some cases. And we saw that in particularly what are called the high tax states, which gets into a debate about federal taxes versus state taxes. But anything that can be done next time around on, on those particular issues in New York, New Jersey, California, on and on. Well, yeah, I think there's a big controversy here about the state and local tax deduction. A lot of uh, left-leaning states are, are, are up in arms about that. We've seen Governor Cuomo, a lot yep. of politicians from California, New Jersey, New York, my home state of Maryland, are concerned about that. I get it. The Democrats are a little upset that we might have raised taxes on a few rich people, and that's their territory. I understand that they don't like, uh, like us stepping on their territory at all. But at the end of the day, we're trying to make a tax code that's better, that's simpler, that's fairer. And we're no longer in the business of subsidizing taxpayers in high-tax states and allowing politicians in big-spending, high-tax states to go about their business and to, to push those burdens onto federal taxpayers. As a final point, though, this is an academic discussion, do you think? It has no chance of getting through the Senate, or are you more optimistic? I think there's a fighting chance to get it through the Senate. Again, we'll see what happens in November with the timeline and everything. There mm -hmm. are a lot more concerns in the Senate about uh, deficit implications. Yes. Uh, just the, the margin of error is very, very small over Which there. someone has to think about at some point, right, the deficit yeah. implications? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the deficit is, is absolutely a concern. The hit for the economy here, I'm sorry, the hit for the federal government here is about $110 billion a year. So we're not talking about chump change. There's real money. I would like to see those, uh, those revenue concerns, those deficit right. concerns addressed more on the outlay side rather than on the tax side. On the side. tax side, right. But, but those, are legitimate, those are legitimate conversations to, to take place. Brandon Arnold, good to see you. Thanks for coming on. We appreciate it My today. My pleasure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, now, Hurricane Florence rapidly strengthening. It's up to a cat four taking aim at the East Coast and the very latest on this storm as we get set for the